I haven't seen that many people clap in a movie theater after a movie in a long time. Back on the cinema scale, guys, today we have Transformers 1. Brothers in Arms, Orion Pax, and D16 becomes Sworn Enemies, Optimus Prime, and Megatron. The film is jammed, packed with everything that you will love about a Transformers movie. Chris Hemsworth is playing Optimus Prime, Alita being played by the fabulous Scarlett Johansson, and Megatron being played by Brian Tyree Henry. Now, I will tell you that this movie is filled to the brim with action, adventure, zest, finesse, caress, excess, everything that you, you really need to be able to bring this movie together. The film centers around them coming from a lowly, lowly assignment as minors. So in their home environment, they are minors in this film. And that's a low class job, you know, and they wore it well. And so Chris Hemsworth's character of Optimus Prime is trying to rise above the circumstances. And so in his attempt to do that, he gets involved in all these crazy, wacky schemes. He does things that are above and beyond, but it goes unnoticed without fail. And then throughout all of this mayhem going on in his life, along with his best buddy, who is his right-hand man, a.k.a. his sidekick, we know that Sentinel Prime is running things. He's like the president of the, the, the planet that they're living on. And he has an objective. He's trying to find the Matrix. Uh, and he goes on these expeditions to be able to find these, this Matrix. And he's doing things that seem to be relevant uh, to the story, right? And then all of a sudden, kablam, a plot, a plot twist. And what I liked about the twist was that certain parts of this film were predictable. There are certain things that I could see coming a mile away. But then there were things where I was like, ooh, oh, mmm. Yeah, the theme in this movie was really good. Not going to spoil it for you guys because certain things uh, in the plot are just so juicy that you got to experience them for yourself. But the film centers around that. These two characters underdog characters are trying to make some of something of themselves while sentinel prime goes on his expeditions trying to salvage what's been lost for his citizens of his planet and then they go on this adventure and then they discover that something just isn't right it's one of those films where it's like we believe one thing the audience is invited into one thing and then something else different totally happens now, along for the ride in this movie, got to give homage, got to gotta give a shout out to KMK, Keegan-Michael Key. He plays Bumblebee in the film. He is absolutely a delight on screen. He has cam cameoatic, not a real word, cameoatic moments in the film where it's like, wow, this guy is really like a lunatic, but he adds character to the story and the plot. It, it works. You're not annoyed with his character. You're not tired of his character, but it works. You really appreciate his essence, his humor, and just the way everything kind of ventures around or centers around his particular role. I will say, though, in c the connection with the villain, right? Because you, you, a story like this always has a villain, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I will tell you guys that I really enjoyed the villain in this story. The main villain, because there's plot twists. So there's a main villain, and then there's a plot twist. And what I liked about this particular villain was just his wittiness. Uh, his motive was really, really good in this particular story. Because if I say who the villain is, then I'll spoil the best parts of the movie for you guys. And obviously we know that a film that has Steven Spielberg attached to it, Michael Bay, is going to give us that pow reaction leaving the local theater. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of plot twists. There's a lot of character development that I really appreciated coming from this film. It's, it's a story that you can connect with. And I think that makes it so much more realistic to the audience because it's like a tale as old as time kind of thing. And, and it really works. Like it really brings this story together. The film is kind of cartoon-esque. So in our theater, there were a couple of rowdy cheering. 
And so uh, you might think that, hey, it's a kid's film, it's a cartoon, but it's so much more behind the surface in connection with this particular film. The runtime, surprisingly, hour 44 minutes. They were able to develop this entire story, get the entire scope of this in one hour and 45 minutes. And I just loved every single drop of that. It was, from the moment the story goes, it, it's rapid pickup. It's not just, oh, we're bored in the theater. It's rapid pickup. Loved seeing that development. Just one, two, three, one, two, three. Kind of like a band in an orchestra. I don't know. There are two post credits in connection with this film. You're going to want to hang on to the edge of your seat for it. My stomach got stupid during the film, and so it was rum, rum, rumbling. But I still held on to that seat, crossed my legs, and I hope for the best. You will not be disappointed coming into this film and then walking out of this movie. I left the theater thinking to myself, like, wow, that is the reason we go to the theater. So, guys, let me know in the comment box what you thought of Transformers 1. It's a prequel story. It's a story, a birth story, as it were. How did it make you feel? What did you think about it? Did it get on your nerves? Was it too corny? Uh, did you see those uh, transitions coming? Let me know what you think in the comment box. And swipe next for a video review that might blow your mind whole. Catch you next time, guys. Peace out.